learners. Hope you are keeping well. Uh, today, we again, we're looking at economic geography uh, with special emphasis on your secondary activity and even more special emphasis on the types of industries. Okay, so let me hide this quickly and get my highlighter and we can get going. So as I was saying, the types of industries. Okay, so let us go forward. And of course, we're going to look at heavy and light industry, raw material oriented industry, market oriented industry, footloose industries, ambiguous industries, and bridge or break of bulk industries. All right, these are the types of industries that stipulated in your curriculum uh, for grade 12 geography. All right, as you know, let's look at what is an industry. I know it's obvious, but we need to get our focus on what is an industry. So it's an economic activity concerned with processing of raw materials and manufactured goods in places like factories and not just factories, bakeries and whatever. Okay, so that is an industry. Okay. We start off, I know you have done these sort of things in your uh, previous grades, but let's look at a heavy industry. All right. Now, what is very known about it? It manufactures large, heavy articles and materials in bulk. That's what it generally manufactures. Okay, you can see here the iron and steel. All right, you can see the horizontal space it occupies. It pollutes a lot also, eh? So let's look at some of the characteristics of this heavy industry. It's on the outskirts of the CBD due to the pollution. Imagine having this in the CBD, all right, right in there. It's going to pollute the area. It's going to create too much of that sort of problem. Okay, on flat land, because it develops horizontally, all right? You will see that we'll talk about single-story buildings later, all right? Because it's horizontal, it needs flat land, and it deals with bulk goods, etc. Okay, so you can't have it in an area which is very hilly. Doesn't make sense. Needs access to major roads and railways. The bulk raw materials are coming in, all right? And the products which are bulky are going out. So you need these major roads to transport it. Railway is a cheaper form of transport. You need it around there, okay, in order to transport in and out of those industries. Of course, it will use a larger amount of water supply, cooling systems, furnaces, or washing of stuff, whatever, massive, All right? It requires cheap land as it develops horizontally. You can't have multi-story buildings here. So if you're going to occupy a large horizontal space and the land is very expensive, it'll create many challenges cost-wise for your industry. So cheaper land, that is why it's more towards the outskirts of the CBD, etc. Okay, it is associated with traffic congestion. All right, don't say traffic, eh? traffic congestion, because there's a lot of trucks and materials coming in, etc., which is creating a lot of congestion. And as I mentioned, single story buildings. And if you look at this, they are single story here. All right, you can't have multi story, you can't carry bulk iron and steel up into multi-story buildings. It doesn't make sense. All right, so a single-story building. It requires a large amount of power supply. If you look at this iron and steel, it must be smelted or melted, whatever. You understand at high temperatures, the power that gen that's used up in all this to manufacture cars, to do this. All right, it's huge. Okay, one of the examples, power stations who... Uh, 
sort of create electricity, iron and steel factories, motor vehicle factories. These are heavy industries that you would get. All right, let's go on. Then we have the light industries. All right, manufacture or generally manufacture small or light articles. All right, that's them. You can see this baker here. He's so happy also. Hey, most probably that roads are smelling very nice. Okay, so you can see that. All right, it's small light stuff. It can be located in the CBD, transition zone, residential areas. It doesn't have to be on the outskirts. Let's look at reasons now. Why it can be situated in all these places in the residential area also. It does not cause a lot of pollution. Okay, there's not much pollution. It does cause a bit of it, but not like as I showed you with those tall chimneys giving off this because there's so much bulk processing, etc. Less traffic congestion. You know, the bakeries will use vans, etc. The tailor shop will use things that are not uh not huge vehicles okay uh it can be single story or multiple story you can have a light industry all right like a tailor shop on the second floor of a building it's not bulky goods etc requires a smaller amount of power supply don't need massive things there's no massive furnaces and whatever that you need there all right I like less traffic congestion. I've repeated it here. Okay. Some examples are jewelry manufacturing. You don't need the clothing factories. Okay. Uh, which could be your smaller or it can be your tailor shop, etc. Computer manufacturing. Okay. And food and beverages like your bakeries, etc. Not massive. They light industries. Okay. Then raw material orientated. It gets the meaning from that raw material orientated. Already you can work it out. Are those industries having their locations cl stuck close to the source of raw materials? Example, a sugar mill close to the sugar plantations. There's your sugar mill here. Yeah? Right, okay. And there's your sugar plantation here. Yeah? Can you see it? It's carrying all the sugar cane, etc. Okay, it's right next door. Okay, to that, so we can process it right there. Okay. We then have market orientated, generally close to the customers and or the marketplace. A uh, reason there, it actually makes it easier for customers to assess or access the goods example in Taylor. All right. It prioritizes identifying the needs and desires of the consumers. It's based on that. You understand? Okay. Creating products to satisfy them. Okay. To satisfy them. So they will create things based on the desires and needs. I know you go to a tailor shop and you want your clothing in a certain way. You understand? It's there. It's next to the market. If there's no market, you understand, this poor guy won't have a shop. So it's market orientated. It needs to be near the market. You understand? So people will come in and assess, okay, based on their needs and of course desires. Okay. Footloose industries. Now, there's something about this industries. They can be located anywhere. Example, manufacturing of microchips. These are light things. If you look at the guy's finger here, yeah. all right, he doesn't have that big fingers. It looks big because a microchip is a small thing. You understand? So it can be produced anywhere. It doesn't have to be next to the raw material. It doesn't have to be next to the market. As I said here, yeah, not doesn't have to, not dependent on raw material and market oriented, or not orientated means that it does depend on raw materials to produce it, but doesn't have to be near the raw material or near the market. So we must, I, I must actually emphasize that uh, it's not dependent on being near 
the market or raw materials. Apologies, learners, but I think I've rectified it because it doesn't need to. It deals with small quantity of raw materials. It's light products. You can have it away from the market. You can take a bulk, a lot of computer chips, put into your boot, and you can take it to the market. All right. So it's not like heavy, bulky goods. So it does. Remember again, footloose industries do not have to be near the raw material or the market. Okay. It can be anywhere and it's fine. Just transport it in a car or whatever. Okay. Then let's take a ubiquitous. I got it right now. A ubiquitous. I always have a problem. In fact, in class, the learners laugh at me also. Ubiquitous. Fantastic. Dave, well done. All right, uh, big you just industries. Now we must be very careful here. Footloose doesn't have to be near the market, near the raw material. Okay, the small products. Here we have industries that are inseparable from the immediate markets they serve. Okay, so they need the market. All right. They need the market, but they are widely distributed. All right. Uh, they are widely distributed and found everywhere. Now, what am I saying here? Okay. I'm saying there's a difference. All right. Let's just take the example of telecommunications, telecom. All right. Okay. Now, telecom can be found anywhere. Okay, they set out the internets, they set out the uh, wires, the fiber, the whatever, all right? And they put it there, it can be found in an industrial area, it can be found in a residential area, all right? It can be found in a business sector, even if you take not land use zones, but land use, like recreation, you will find sometimes the systems are working through, okay? We all would agree with that. But there's a difference, okay? If there's no market, nobody wants it. Let's take an internet connection or telecom, etc., or their lines and things. Then they're not going to put it there. You understand? So it's around everywhere. It can be found anywhere. Uh, chances are like a footloose industry, like a, like a tailor shop. You understand? It's not dependent on the market, all right? Uh, but here, yeah, this one is. So that is your difference between ubiquitous and footloose industry. It does footloose does not have to be near the markets. You understand? Here we find they are inseparable from the markets. It actually goes through the areas like telco. Okay. I hope I brought out the difference between the two. Okay. Right. Bridge or break of bulk industries. This takes place where cargo is transferred from one mode of transport to another. Okay, that's where these industries take place. Example, a port like Port Elizabeth. Okay, in South Africa. What happens here where car manufacturers, where motor car manufacturers, you find Ford, General Motors, etc. are located. Okay, so at this point, it's very, very beneficial to these heavy industries to locate there. Because what happens? They may require some semi-process or raw materials or parts that come from other countries. And they come to the port, okay? And what happens at the port is, they don't have further transport costs, etc. They take it directly into the factories or industries and they manufacture there. Okay. And from there, when it's manufactured, it goes to the car sales, etc. And then it's sold to the consumer. Okay. Or the market itself. Okay. But that's where these industries are situated. So, yeah, the raw materials 
are imported, right, and taken directly for processing because it's right at the port. Okay, so it's taken directly, saving a lot of costs. Okay, and then distributed to be sold to the consumer or market. It can be both ways. It can be then sold, you understand, uh, parts of it then go off, the finished products go off into the country to, uh, let's say, Port Elizabeth, to uh, Western Cape, to Gauteng, etc. Or it can be exported, you understand, from that point, okay, uh, to other countries. All right. So that is your break of bulk industry, also known as your bridge industry. Okay. Right. I'm always playing around with my slides these days. I hope I created some clarity with the types of industries. All right. Uh, that you know the differences, etc. Okay, learners. All the best. Goodbye.